the blessing. You know, we've got 40 subscribers now to our YouTube channel. Picked up four new subscribers in the last month. So, I mean, the blessing, you know, what, what's being done here is going so far beyond <laughs> these four walls. You know, like I say, you know, my, my friend you know, Bob Reynolds in the Philippines, you know, uh, it's a radio station, so it's only the audio going out, but that audio going out over that part of the Pacific Rim. You know, there's another radio station in the Philippines doing the same thing. So praise God, you know. Don't don't think small. <laughs> don't think small, folks. You know we're we're reaching people around the globe. <laughs> you know the missionaries that we support and work we do. Okay, we're doing God's work. Amen and amen. All right, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. That's going to be our text <clears throat> this morning. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5 and verse 17. Again, once you find your place, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Because that's what it is. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Here the scripture says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, we all need a little uplift this morning. We all need some encouragement, Lord. Uh, some of us have been seeing some hard things in our lives. And it hurts. Well, we need to stay encouraged. And I know that's why you gave me this message. So, Lord, I pray, bless our hearts with it and encourage us and lift us up with it. Lord, and let us leave here this morning glorifying you for all your wondrous care and all your gifts and promises. And we pray and ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. We are in a metamorphosis stage of our existence. When my grandkids got a hold of a monarch butterfly caterpillar that had gone into a, its cocoon state earlier this year. You know. Most kids somewhere along the line will, will do that so they can see that metamorphosis from that ugly, multi-legged, fuzzy, crawling thing into that beautiful, glorious butterfly that we all love to see. Nobody grows caterpillar bushes. We grow butterfly bushes, right? We're in a the process of a wholesale change to our entire being that was initiated at the new birth and will be completed at the blessed hope when we receive a new body. In Revelation 21 and verse 5, Lord Jesus Christ he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. In the Holy Bible, we are given in detail the 7,000 year process by which the Trinity, produces their collective end. The perfect, ever-expanding universe occupied by a sinless, free-willed race of beings. And they love each other through all eternity because each has chosen to do so. 
Now there are some indications in this book of what occurred before. And there's actually quite a bit in there that tells us what's going to happen after those 7,000 years. But by and large, what this book has here for us is that 7,000 year period. All of it a determined and deliberate process formulated by the Godhead to produce a people. Why go through all the trouble? <laughs> you know, people say, why go through all, you know, being the Almighty, why not just simply produce exactly what you wanted to begin with, you know, and avoid all the chaos and hassle? <laughs> well, two words, free will. Free will. God was determined that those beings that he created must have a free will so that they can choose to love and to obey God. That's the risk every person takes in every relationship. It's the risk every parent takes in giving life to a child. I mean, would you truly be loved? If you could produce a perfect spouse who was programmed to love you, or give birth to a child who was programmed to love you. Think about my sister this morning. Broken heart. Because of a son that doesn't love her. It's the risk you take. It would not be something they were choosing to do. They'd have no choice but to do so because that was how they were created. Would you really be loved if that were the case? That's not what God wanted. It's not what God wanted. You know, the truth is, Adam and Eve were exactly what God wanted. What the risk was, would they choose, when they were tested, to love God above all else, even their own lives. You know, but the wonderful, and beautiful, divine difference was the Trinity wasn't taking any risks at all. <laughs> Go to Acts 15, 18 with me. He didn't take any risks. Acts 15... Verse 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Go also over to John, Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 34. John 4, 34. Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Also John 17, verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. The Godhead in their infinite wisdom and understanding had devised a plan, a process, so that it would result in their desired end without risk. Because he didn't leave it to us. 
nor would it infringe upon, nor would it negate the free will of any of the intelligent beings whom God had created. They were all fully informed. They were all fully free to choose, completely aware of the end results of their choices. Romans chapter 1. Book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 18, 19, and 20. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The Lord rebuke thee. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And the devil will use even animals sometimes to distract. I want you to hear this. That God had an infinite wisdom and understanding. He produced a plan. Let man know. For that matter, let Lucifer know. Let the angels know. They made choices. If you're still in Romans, go to chapter 11. Romans 11, pick it up at verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. <laughs> Amen. God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And those who choose to respond to the light and to the promise that God has provided will do so by their free will and will receive everlasting life. And likewise, those who will not and choose otherwise are going to receive everlasting damnation. And that's clearly and plainly known. What was God's choice? I just quoted it for you. Whosoever will. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's choice. And we just read over there in Romans 1. Go back there again. Pick it up at uh, verse... Here. Verse 18. Romans 1, 18. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident... Whoop, that's chapter 2. I'm going to say that doesn't sound right. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, we were reading there in verse 18. And we came down. Pick it up at verse uh, 21. Because that when they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. 421, the end of the chapter. 
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Here he's speaking of Abraham. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Continue into chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans 8, verse 18 to 23. Romans 8, 18 to 23. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. We have a newborn spirit. Our eternal soul has been bonded together with that newborn spirit after it was cut away from our yet unredeemed flesh by the Holy Spirit of God. That's Colossians 2.11. The body of Christ, the church, acts for us right now as our spiritual body until that day comes. While we remain here in this mortal world, using this stuff, using this mortal flesh as a tool to reach lost humanity. Galatians 2.20. Oh, I got you doing a lot of Bible drill this morning. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. I am. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh that stuff. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Over in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Well-known verses. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 6.11 Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The daily battle against the mortal flesh is one which none of us is exempt. It's troublesome. It is wearisome. And it's frustrating. And we will be a completely new creature. That's what we long for. That's what we long for. We have the first fruits 
of that, we have the newborn spirit. Our soul's been cut away from the flesh, so we can no longer affect that. But man, we still have to drag this mess around. We long to be freed of it. We individually came into existence via our mortal births as eternal <clears throat> souls. Everybody who's born is an eternal soul. You know, but this is the only part of our original creature that will continue on. Our newborn spirit, well, we weren't born with the spirit. That continues on. And that came into existence at our salvation. Okay. And it has not one thing to do with this mortal, temporal life. I'll give you more scripture. <laughs> John chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. <laughs> speaking with Nicodemus, John chapter 3, 6 and 7. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Should seem pretty plain and clear. <laughs> Some folks don't get it. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Back in Romans 8 again. Looking at 14 to 17. <coughs> For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, and we do, that we may be also glorified together. Go over to 1 John. All the way to the back here, 1 John chapter 3, and we're also going to look at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 11. 1 John 5, 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Verse 11, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And that life is in his Son. We are born of the Holy Spirit of God. We are adopted by God the Father and one body. With God, the Son, the only begotten Son. Ephesians 4. I told you I was going to have you do a lot of Bible drill. Ephesians 4. 30 to 32. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, 
forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Genesis 3.20, we'll read the verse for you. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Hang on, hang on to that verse, Genesis 3.20. Every human being is born mortally as a dead soul through the union of two other dead souls with mortal bodies. And I want you to hang on to your heads. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get deep here for a few minutes and we're going to chew on some meat for you this morning. Your becoming a living soul rests not one bit on your lineage. Your mother, your father, but what you chose. Psalm 51.5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Well, David's mother wasn't a whore. That's not what he's talking about. In sin did my mother, his mother and father, mortal souls. That's what he's talking about. That's how everybody's born. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And there isn't one thing that you can do for anybody else when it comes to that. They have to make that choice. You have to make that choice. When you were born again, your mortal body, okay, its attachments and its lineage to this mortal world ceased. Okay? Your connections to this world when you were born again ceased. Matthew chapter 12. Listen to what the Lord himself has to say about it. Matthew chapter 12. We want to look at verses 49 and 50. Last two verses in that chapter. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Remember there in the story, his mother and his brethren and his sisters were outside of where he was wanting to see him. They couldn't get in because there were so many people there. Christ said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. That's a spiritual that's a spiritual attachment. As long as we continue in this world with a mortal body, our obligations to those mortal relationships continue. But once the mortal body dies, or our change comes, as Job talks about in Job 14.14, 14, we are free from the law of mortality. Romans chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Romans 7, 1 and 2. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. He gives an example. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. When you pass from this life into the next, whether through death of the flesh or its instantaneous changing at the blessed hope, your metamorphosis will be complete. With the receiving of your glorified body, which happens at the blessed hope, the resurrection of the church, you will become a completely new being. 
a new creature. Romans 8, 11 again. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Philippians 3.21 Philippians 3.21 Who